Hey, it's Gil from the Mind Buzz. Today's Mind Culture and Social Podcast. And you're listening to Pods Like Us. To the video, that's a bit easier said than done. You don't have to do video if you don't want to. Why are you coming through like that? Oh, why is it coming out of there? That's unusual. What the heck is going on? Hold on, hold on. What's going on here? Huh? Audio. My face is working. My face is probably going to shake. Let's do that. That's better. Yeah, no, this. This webcam isn't the best. Also, yeah. why is this going on? It's unusual. Hmm. That's very unusual. Yeah. Okay, is this working differently? I don't know what this is doing. Oh. Where did my zoom go? Microphone. What's the matter, dude? Yeah, so you can't see me at all. Just my forehead. Yeah, I can just see your forehead. We can turn video off if you like, make the signal better. If you prefer. This is unusual. I, I, I'm, about that, I'm at the highest step I can be. There you go. That's better. That's better. But I still can't hear you. Well, I think I can. What am I hearing on there? Hold right. on. Uh, go, go into the settings. I might need to play with some settings here. Go to settings and audio. Where are the settings? There's like a cogwheel in the top, um, the top corner of the other page, the other page for Zoom, mm -hmm. isn't there? Make it bigger. On the other page, best screen. Participant, stop video mute. That's not what I want. Here you go. Audio settings. Okay, this is plus this. Okay, let's let's test that. How does that sound? There you go. How's that? Yeah, I can hear you a lot better now. Yeah, so it's better. Yeah, it's coming through your. The mic, I can't hear everything I say. I know. I don't know how to do that. Headset. Yeah. What? E even when the I headset? use, I I don't know how to hear myself either when I'm doing this. Ah, uh, yeah. Well, I don't want to hear myself that much, to be fair. No. That's easier said than done. <laughs> yeah. Um, lighting, of course, is not very good right now. 
No. I'm trying to get a baby to sleep. Yep. And my but blue I, screen I mean, is Mami working Co. perfectly. And... Well, mine isn't. Mine doesn't exist. I didn't even know that was a thing. You can do blue screen. Do, 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 do. I've got oh, blue I, screen. I want to test that. I've got a blue screen behind me. Oh, look. Yeah. Choose virtual background. Oh. Yes. A legitimate blue screen. Yeah, I've actually got a legitimate blue screen behind me, yeah. I don't. I just have. I have. Oh, so you won't let me do it. Virtual backgrounds are cool, though. That's what I'm trying to figure out. That's I don't think I have well. any images that's actually worth worth uh, making my virtual background. Let, let's see if I've got something. Let's have a look. What would you have? Let's have a look. Background and filters. Mm -mm 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 -mm. What, you don't want to be in outer space or anything? <laughs> Oh, oh, my egg really does look red. What does outer space look like? There you go. Ooh. I could look like that. Have a look. Hey, I've not got As that you one. See, there, there is someone that on is a, cool. a unicycle. Oh, this is just one of my normal pictures. Yeah, someone on a unicycle not like on, one do of, that. on Saturn's uh, rings. Da, da, da. Or I could... I, I, I. Yeah, I could do this one. Hey, that's pretty cool. Pretend that I'm somewhere I'm not. Oh, what else have I got? <laughs> or I could just... I don't know. Um, this one's because I'm in the Eagle Nebula. Unfortunately, between my headset, you can see what's actually behind me. I know. Which is I quite know. funny. I have to watch it because if I go like this... We'll go... Oh, no. no, you, That's brilliant. It's doing a good job, that is. Mm. That doesn't do a very good job with my headset, well. though. No. It really does. What's this video filter thing do? Oh, see, that doesn't work. No. Oh, well. Uh, I quite like this one of the Eagle Nebula, though. I like that one. That's cool. Yeah. But um, I'm not used to doing this much. No. I'm definitely not used to doing it with... 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 with, with um, whatever this is called, virtual backgrounds. Yeah. What do reactions do? Oh, look, I could do thumbs up. Right. See, I've ne I clearly never played with, but there you go. I've never played with it either. No, no, apparently you can record stuff. Yeah, this is actually recording. Oh, is it? Yeah, my Zoom is automatically set to record. I don't know if I should feel frightened about that or not. I'll try not to say anything too incriminating then. Right. That's <laughs> okay. Yeah, it's in case I have chats with people and then suddenly they'll mention podcasting and I'll go, right, I can use that. <laughs> mm. Yeah. Yeah, I haven't done a lot. I haven't, like, watched a lot of podcasts, just the mm. odd one or two. It's, uh, I suppose, fairly recently for me, to be honest. Yeah. Um, it's a little bit difficult to um, watch a YouTube video when you're yeah. walking from one place to the other. Yeah. And the journey from the Nottingham train station to where I work takes about 20 minutes. Right. Okay. So, so what do you do to fill that time? Yeah. I mean, I, I I only listen to them. I don't I don't watch them because obviously I can't I can't watch a video while I'm driving. No, exactly for work. So I do mind listening. I mean, what what made you think of listening to to a podcast for the first time anyway? Or yeah, um, suppose you started to do your podcast. I started to listen to the first one of your video. Uh, it would be only like about because you'd watch it listen to it i should say yeah. for the time it would take for me to get to the tram tram stop back home that's yeah. about five to ten minutes yeah uh so you, you didn't get through much of the video and you'd lose track of where you are it yeah. was that uh i say that american guy but i think every guy that you, you speak to is american almost so which american guy you're on about you're on about uh joe rogan because he's the one that mm. most people listen to i don't to. think it was that guy no. 
I'm going to have to look it up. I don't, I don't know his name. I think he, his podcast is called Out of the Blank. Oh, Robbie. I said yeah. the very first one. Yep. Robbie Robertson. Yeah. Robbie. Yep. His accents. I, you know, I did watch a little bit of the one with Sam as well. Okay. Of course. Yeah. I, I think Sam just likes to sass me. <laughs> every every time he discuss music, um, he he pretty much insults any music I like. Yeah. At the expense, uh, you know. For example, the biggest example being that the uh, Beatles are overrated. He's wrong, of course. He is wrong. He's very. He's, wrong. he's allowed to yeah. be wrong. He is allowed to be wrong. Yeah, I think he's trolling. And he's allowed to be wrong. I think he's trolling personally. But there you go. I think he's trolling. Yeah, I think. I so. think it's one of he's, he's. But I guess when you ask about the grinding your goat thing, oh wow, it's really it makes my face disappear almost halfway. Um, it does. Yeah. What was I going to say? The grinding goats thing is, you know, when people uh, they don't like things because they're popular, yeah, and they're trying to be edgy or niche because you know they they, they dislike something that's popular. Yeah. Let's be fair. I'm sure all of us have done that before. Yeah. I you see so. something popular, and you think, "Oh, that's stupid rubbish." So yeah. you so you don't like it. Sometimes you realise that things are popular because they're good. Yeah. And sometimes it's okay to like something popular. Yeah. Like the Beatles, like... And other times people have got to realise that Avatar is rubbish. Mm, was Avatar actually popular? I yes. mean, it sold a lot of money, but... I mean, it, it made a lot of money, but I think a lot of that is because James Cameron... Yeah, and there's a lot of high expectations about James Cameron. He's done some fantastic films, including the be his best film, which is Terminator One, yeah. um, and Aliens. I, I won't say anything about Alien. Uh, wait, Terminator Two because it's okay. It, it's merely okay, not good, not amazing, not good. Might cause oh, some yeah. fights saying that. One, two. And forget everything after one and two. Yeah. But for the first one was the best. And I might cause a bit of flack for saying that, but again, personal opinion. It is. Yeah. I don't think Terminator 2 is overrated. It's an excellent film. But for me, I think it is, it is very much the difference between Alien and Aliens. A Terminator 1 was a, a very much a horror film. Yeah. Arnold Schwarzenegger was a monster. And... There was no, or pretty much no chance of, of defeating him, yeah. like the alien. Yeah. And then Terminator Two, it's like, well, you've you've got the big, you got the big hard guy on your side, so it's more of an action movie. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Hey, this is Brian with Concert Stamp Madness Podcast, and you're listening to Pods Like Us, a great show about other great shows. It's like the alien films. I mean, they're all different. So you've mm. got the the first alien film is a is is absolutely a horror film. Then the second absolutely. the second never, one by I've, I've Cameron seen that's bits a, of it. action action. The exactly. second one, Aliens, is an action film. Yeah, and, and then, then the, I'm presuming every other alien film after that is just like the Terminator films. Ignore them. Number three, I do like number three a lot. Never seen it. That's I mean, a, I haven't it's seen a, it's any in a of them. Prison. Hmm. It, it, it's, stuck on, it's stuck on a pr pr prison planet, so they can't actually get away because they're all imprisoned mm. there. And, they're all uh, stuck. So, so you've got all those tight spaces that there are, that are all these prison, um, um, you know, corridors and and that. So it, it adds to the to all that. So it's more of a, yeah, it's more of a uh, suspense. Well, is it a suspense? No, but it's more of a completely different beast altogether for one to be different not quite horror no not quite horror but, but a yeah. bit more thriller like yeah. yeah a bit more of a thriller yeah definitely yeah that's an interesting thing because uh, i was speaking to mariko a little bit about sequels well, not just yeah. sequels but anywhere where you expand on a property yeah and you think about what makes what makes a sequel good or not just a sequel, prequel, uh, adaptation and stuff. 
and you think of like um sequels are very much hit and miss most people will say that sequel most sequels are nowhere near better than the original first film yeah yeah but then you've got some sequels that are fantastic definitely yeah and then yeah. you've got some sequels that are abysmal aka for example the third terminator film was atrocious yes absolutely you, yeah you, but then you could then you get you you've got these films like terminator 2 and aliens where it's totally different and it's still good yeah yeah it's a weird one yeah. because normally i would say if you want to make a expand on anything uh if you adapt it i think most of it was adapting because like you know Isaac watches a lot of Thomas the Tank Engine. Yeah. And I don't know if you've seen the new Thomas the Tank Engine cartoon. No, I've not seen that. So they did it in CGI, and that's okay. It's Some of it's good. Some of it's, you know, it's hit and miss. Yeah. And then you have, um, I'm going to have to, I see I get a picture, and I can put it as my background. It's but it's Another interesting one is Marvel, where all the Marvel films are different types of film. Mm. So, so you know. Guardi- yeah. Guardians of the Galaxy, that's that's a sci-fi. Uh, Ant-Man is a... Ant-Man is like a... Um, oh, it's like oh a heist film, isn't it, Ant-Man? Yeah, yeah. to a degree. Yeah. Um, Enjoyed Ant-Man. Yeah. Win- Winter Soldier, that's... Did it, did it save in here? Yeah. Winter Soldier is like hmm. a political thriller. To... This is oh. a new Thomas. Oh, looks cute, doesn't it? It's not very good. <laughs> I'll, I'll put it nicely. I wish I had a green screen, but say, never mind. Yeah, the the Marvel ones are a very interesting one because you look at the Marvel, and that's that's an adaptation of a comic book, a series yeah. of comic books, yeah. and you you ask yourself how many adaptations of comic books are good yeah ignoring stuff that marvel's done themselves and you think about it the stuff that marvel's done themselves is is by marvel themselves yeah so they are absolutely um faithful to the original to a degree it's their own stuff yeah so it, it while it is but the thing is, with a sequel or a, a, an adaptation or anything like that, you have to add something new to yeah. make it good. Because if you're doing the more of the same thing, people are going to get bored. Yeah. You have to add something new and at the same time, be faithful to the original, the, the source material. Go back to Thomas the Tank Engine because I'm, I'm clearly on the on whole parenty parent stuff. <laughs> you know, who grew up with that, the model cartoons were fantastic. Yeah. Because they were incredibly faithful to the original for the first two or three years while it was Ringo Starr. Yeah. And he was, he was reading the Reverend, he was, he was reading the Reverend Audrey stories. Yeah. 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 And they were the actual stories. Yeah. And you could tell, I think it's okay to tell your own story, adapting those characters yeah. having your own spin as long as you're respectful to the original work. Yeah, I think so. And again, going with, with, with other franchises that we're all familiar with. I think that's why, um, got, not very controversial here. Uh, what's it called? Star Wars, the last Jedi. Yep. Yeah. And I feel that the reason that it, probably is very much like Marmite to a lot of people is by twisting everyone's expectations. It's sort of being a little bit disrespectful to the original material. Yeah. And again, and you, you look at the, the store, what came before it with uh, all, all the, all the strings from uh, the force awakens. Yeah. And it just burns all those strings kills off Luke the relationship between uh, Ray and Finn is thrown away yeah I think that's probably why some people don't really like Rose that much yeah also probably because they just don't like the Asian girl she's yeah. a bit unfortunate she's nice she probably 
Like I said, very much missed opportunities. I think one of the other big problems I think, that I think they made... I was going to say one of the other big problems that they made was that when they bought the rights from from George Lucas, he mm. already had a three-part story already written that he sold, and he had various other ideas that, that he sold to them as well with the rights. And I think mm. one of the big problems that they made then was basically just to say, do you know what? these ideas that he's given us, throw them in the bin, we'll come up with something ourselves. And then they decided that the first film they'd have JJ make, JJ Abrams. And so he started it a certain way yeah. with one idea, but then they got somebody else on for the second film without the involvement of JJ Abrams, who took it somewhere completely different. Whereas if they'd have kept Abrams for all three films, they would have at least had a specific creative force with a plan for all three of them there. So they messed up in two ways there by, first of all, throwing away George Lucas's idea and not adapting that. And then secondly, when they did that, they didn't keep the same creative person or team for all three of the sequels. Yeah. And that, that, that again, Get rid of uh, George Lucas's ideas is very much like, you know, you're talking about the faithfulness to the original uh, material. Yeah. And you throw that out the window, you throw away what a lot of fans love. By all means, have your own story. It's great. It, that, you know, yeah. different ideas are great. Um, but you've got to be respectful for the original story, the original source material. And talking about um shit I hate when you lose you, you what you wanting to say yeah ba bad batch uh, is good by the way bad batch yeah the new star wars What's uh, that? animated series i did not know it existed that's brilliant bad batch that is really good yep star wars bad batch yeah why wow, it's like half my face is disappearing Ooh. no Ooh. yeah that's, that's weird that's, that's not got any involvement, I don't think, from from the Skywalkers. I think. But then also not having a single creative um, team, even even if all but all, all the guys involved were working together, yep. rather than pulling in totally different directions. I think that was it. People were pulling in different directions, and it just made the whole story very patchwork, and it didn't work. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Oh, it didn't work as well as it could have done. But, you know, Star Wars is full of missed opportunities, even when it was Lucas's. Yeah, but then again, I mean, even uh, even Marvel have had missteps as well, because Thor The Dark World is not the best. Ah, is that the second one? Yeah, the second one, yeah. Where Natalie Portman's character ends up going to... Um... Thor, Thor The Dark World? Yeah, doesn't she get... Let's look up which one's which. Yeah. Is Ragnarok the third one? The Ragnarok yes, is the is. third one, yeah. The funny one, yeah. Where he meets up with the Guardians of the Galaxy. No, he doesn't meet up with the Guardians of the Galaxy. I lose no, track actually. of them all. Yeah. I know, I know. I thought he did. I thought he did at the end. Yes, at the very end in the post-credits, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, he does because he crashes onto their... Uh, he's actually in space, isn't he? Floating in space and they crash into him or whatever and bring him mm. aboard which leads yeah. to which leads to the beginning of um leads to the beginning of infinity war mm. i still keep meaning to start watching that one i've not got around to it right and i know it's good and i know end game is good it's just parenting yeah that's right yeah it sort of screws your times over a bit yeah you got two of them but there you go um a couple of years you'll be able to watch all of them with them uh, yeah, it would be nice. Very little time to do stuff like that. You can introduce them to Earth's Mightiest Heroes, that series. <laughs> oh, that one. That yeah, one's good. That one is I, good. I've seen most of it. I got I got so far in... Let's be fair, that's one of the best cartoons that they've, that they, that they've done. Yeah. And it was an absolute um, travesty that they uh, switched it over to um, the other one. Yeah. It was more like the movies, and the movies are good, but 
the cartoons were fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. Then you think yeah. about like I haven't seen much of the DC ones. I think DC ones have been handled terribly. Yeah. The films have for sure. Yeah. I saw Batman versus Superman. Yeah. And I thought Batman versus Superman was and I mean I'm not the biggest DC fan. I, I like a little bit of of but then again DC itself is all over the place. And again, you say that and so it's Marvel. Yeah. They're all, all over the place these days. It really makes you look like I'm looking that way, but I'm not I'm looking there. Hmm. Oh I actually should, I'm I should be looking, looking into at the picture myself. I'm gonna move. Oh, there we go. That's probably a bit better. Oh, I'm disappearing. I'm looking over there because that's where I have my face. Ooh. So I just covered the covered the uh, camera and I I, I disappeared. I don't, I can't do that. Oh yeah, I can. There Ooh. you are. Woo, yeah. <laughs> woo. That's so cool. It is. Is so the part where like my my headphones are like there and it, it's like you can just see yeah if I behind got close, the room. See a bit oh, it's probably good because you can't my see. Headphones. I don't know. Hmm. Maybe. Unfortunately, I, I have to have a, a sticky out headset. I, I don't have a fancy microphone. No, I do. I've got a fancy ish microphone. And I've just got this, which is a lot better than the one for my old headset, uh, which is this one. Which I can't see. Oh, you can't see because I've got. Just a second. You've got the background on. This one. Yep. Yeah. And it costs about 20 quid, I think. It does, does but it's, it's, it's all okay. Yeah, I've got a lamp behind me. Yep. Yeah. Uh, I like being in space. Ooh. Me too. Ooh, hello. You're going all That's over. Really That's really fun. That's weird. I know. I've, I've, I did not go sideways. It is. I, I really... Oh, you could do subtitles with this. I did not know that existed. How does that work? Subtitles? What do I you did mean? not know that was a thing. That is so cool. Where? Where am I going? Actually, I don't use dual monitors. There's a thing called accessibility. Yep. And I would have assumed that like you could do closed captions, but it doesn't appear to work. Let's have a look. Accessibility. Oh, Hello. So I don't think it does actually do subtitles or anything like that. I'm a bit disappointed now. Me too. Ooh. But apparently they also share screen. Yeah. I don't think I will be doing anything in the way of recording because... Because I've been trying for ages to set up something because apparently there's a transcription thing available where it um, transcribes the whole show for me or the whole recording. That would be useful be very useful that would I, I imagine if it was automatic it wouldn't it would it wouldn't be the most um the most accurate and the amount of times you try to say to your phone hey google or hey siri or whatever it is you use yep. um although i'm not going to do that because my phone trying to look here and it's just not like oh look i can raise my hand i'm surprised hey, your phone pick hasn't me, started talking pick me. to you oh, it's not working <laughs> hey google no, it doesn't want to. It's a security thing. If it's plugged in, it won't. It won't do it. Oh wow! It's, it's really not wanting to charge very fast. Oh well, that's, that's clever playing with that. That's Ooh. unusual. Where's he gone? Ooh. Yeah, I've never really, I've never really uh, toyed around with it very much. No. I think if Mariko was to use this, she'd have to use her phone. I can't believe I've been doing this since September and I'm still learning mm -mm. what to do. You oh, think I'd be an, you, hand. you think I'd be an expert at all this by now? Yeah, you would. They get, you know, there's always new things to learn with these things all the time. That's true. Yeah. Do, 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 do. I, don't, I don't think I have anything like that I want to use. But it is interesting. I've never really... I, I've not really done much in the way of... Um, I don't think we need gallery view because it, it it's not necessary yeah i've not used this that much i'm agent scott and i'm cam the provocateur and we're from the spy hards podcast that's right and you are listening to pods like us the podcast that also has the midas touch but yeah going back to podcasts i started doing it just because 
you know, as soon as I switch my screen to like not big size, it's like the brightness on this thing is ridiculous. I'll try, I could try settings. Yeah. It, it does help if I actually know what I'm doing a bit better. Oh, I can't change the settings. Why? I oh, you know what it is. It's there you go. Probably a bit less bright now and a bit more like normal ish yeah. looking. Yeah. Normal lighting, which yeah. is better. Oh man, I'm so blurry. Which is <laughs> all right. Cover's not very good. Which is I okay because nobody will hear the brightness going up and down anyway. You just hear me clicking. Yeah. Um but yeah, postca- podcasts. Yep. It's very easy to get uh, di- diverging and digressing and stuff. That's fine. Um like I said, I started because my, I did a bit of walking. Yeah. At first, it was just like just walking from how from the tram stop to my ha- to home, yeah. which is five ten minutes. But did it about a bit more once a week, just doing a bit of a walk from work to the train station because it's it's ten pound cheaper to take the train. Wow. And then twenty minute walk, it saves money. It's better for my health. I'm getting a bit of a triple chin and uh, an extra belly, so uh, I thought I'd better start doing that. Right. And it's difficult to figure out what you really want to listen to. Yeah. So, so how do you pick what you listen to? Good question. I don't know. Um, probably. I wouldn't say it's unlike other people, but because that'd be super hipster and stuff. But yeah, I, I've got some fairly niche interests. So I looked for things that would fit and suit my niche interests, which lately is board games. Yep. So I just search for the board, one of the board games I'm interested in to see what people have to say about it. And if it's any good, uh, I've been watching, I say watching, uh, yeah, I've been watching a, a few like video shows on YouTube by uh, a lovely gentleman uh, called Will Wheaton. Yeah. And he does, uh, he, he plays board games. I guess that's how I started with that. So after going from Will Wheaton, who's decided he doesn't like doing that particular show anymore because of I guess, production reasons. Uh, I thought I'd what, listen to some podcasts about similar games. Do a bit of try, you know, get some opinions, try before you buy. Yeah. Yeah, that's a good idea, that. And it's a bit of that, a bit of a... Uh, well, not, not so much try as bad, but yeah, you get, get an idea of what it's all about. Yeah. Because... You know, you, you we've we've all had cases of buyer's remorse where you look at a product and you don't research it very much and you spend a reasonable amount of money and you never use it. Yeah. And you you just kick yourself. Yeah, yeah. We've all done that, bought something and then regretted buying it. Definitely. Yeah, so with the board games, it's like Listen to people talk about it. There's a uh, unre- totally unrelated to board uh, to to podcasts. There's a uh, a game on Steam called Tabletop Simulator where you can download uh, a virtual board games, try them out, and if you like them, yep. our plan is to buy them. Right. Uh, so very much try before you buy. Are there any specific shows then that you've that you've listened to that you can remember? Off the top of my head, yeah, probably two. Yeah. Oh, not actually off the top of my head. I have to actually look them up because I'm not. Uh, one of the ones based on role playing games. There's a, a quite a popular role playing game uh, called or system called Pad by the Apocalypse, and I was watching these guys on YouTube for a little while and it turns out because all of it is, even though it's YouTube, it's all visual, it's all verbal, not visual. Yeah. So you're not seeing anything. You're just listening. Um, they're called plus one forward and they would disc because it's, it's a system Other people can make their own 
games on a different um different genre yeah. so the original game was called apocalypse world and that's based off of post-apocalyptic settings mad max yeah not necessarily mad max but you know that sort of idea uh you could be you know uh, and, and telling stories about people driving around a wasteland might not be a, a desert nuclear wasteland it could be you know um overgrown overgrown plants all over cities yep. or an ice age and, and other people have taken that system and done amazing other things with it a, a good example is uh because i know you like superheroes called masks yep where you create a team of teenage superheroes I think in a lot of role-playing games, I know this isn't something you're particularly interested or keen on, uh, you would be, you know, you make your stats, how strong you are. But because these characters are teenagers, the stats are how they see themselves and other people can influence them and change those stats. If someone makes you feel like you're more superior because you've got, you know, super, super natural powers, or they'll make you throw you to the ground and make you feel like you're mundane. Yeah. And that has an effect on the things you do. So I guess it's very much like young justice, young Spider-Man type things. Yeah. It's easy to forget. Like Spider-Man's Spider-Man was originally a kid. Although you don't, I guess with Tom Holland being Spider-Man, it's like, yeah, he's a kid. Tom Holland does a very good kid Spider-Man. I think so. I think so. Yeah, I know my my thoughts are going all over the place. That's all right, but the the role playing games that reminds me of when we used to play games like Diablo mm. on the computer. Uh, Diablo's, yeah, there are other games like that are still out there. Mm. Yeah, and yeah, a Diablo is very much like what you'd expect from something like Dungeons and Dragons, which I think when we grew up, you know, even though it was like from your childhood years, probably. Yeah. Um, we'd never experience it because I think that was in the early seventies that came out, right? Originally, so, oh, yeah. uh, but I don't think it ever got traction over here for ages. No, not till probably the early eighties. Not until no. like no. the nineties. No, no. For, for yeah, anybody, 80s and 90s, for yeah. anybody listening, like, yeah, for anybody listening, James is my younger brother, and there were twelve years between us. Okay, <laughs> so carry on, bro. Go on. Oh right. <laughs> My thoughts are probably going all over the place. That's a bit rubbish. That's okay. Was it? But yeah. Um, People like tangents. Throughout my, I think in the UK, in, in the UK, things like Dungeons and Dragons never really took off as much until probably the 2000s. Okay. Yeah. I think. Whereas I think most people over here probably were more interested in war games like Warhammer. Yeah, and board board games wise, probably and risk stuff. risk because I know I know your dad John like John liked them, liked risk, as far as I can remember, he did anyway. Yeah, yeah. Never really understood risk, no, and of course we all know that. the infamous Monopoly. Yes. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. But uh, yeah, Monopoly can break friendships. It yeah. also breaks relationships, apparently. Yeah, we've got two but different. I think versions. a lot of that is because of the way that that game's. There's loads of different versions out there. I don't understand why it's so popular, though. No. It's not exactly the most fun game. No. no. If you're winning, it's amazing. Yeah. But as soon as you start to slip, it's just a slow slope down to defeat. Yeah. And it's not very fun. No. Unless your name's Mark. <laughs> Games like Risk and Diplomacy, that people don't normally play Monopoly properly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because, like with Monopoly, yeah. if you land on a square, I don't know if you knew this, if you land on a square, you are obligated to either buy the property or put it up for auction. Right, okay. No one ever puts it on up for auction. You, They just say, I don't want to buy it, and then no one buys it no one has it so that by buying putting it up for auction which you the player who landed on it could also bid for 
it it sort of speeds the game up a little bit and people don't think about that they don't yeah i mean i never knew that as a kid uh, it's an alternative way of playing it because the older versions if you buy the old board games it doesn't have that in the uh, instructions but the newer versions of monopoly it does have that up as an alternative uh, playing hmm. me- method but the older games don't they have it the way that uh, okay. they have the ga- they have it the way that the old versions from like the 70s 80s on 80s before they all have the other way of doing it where you just land and if you don't want to hmm. buy it well, you don't want to buy it and you just move on. I've always assumed that was a house rule, though, actually. Right, yeah. But, you know, don't know. That's something we probably have to look into and research. I mean, it's interesting, yeah. It's, it's Not probably too one- hard, but, um, <laughs> yeah, a lot of games, I think, and I think that's what brought um, the concept of what's called the Euro game into play because it's it's really annoying when you're playing a board game yeah and you lose and you're out so it's not it's not so much it's bad enough that you're losing and then you get eliminated yeah and you're sitting there watching everyone else play i know monopoly it's a case of you watching one person like just win and then the other people on that slippery slope to defeat but i think i think the interesting thing about monopoly is it was it was it's meant to be that way it's supposed to be like a um like sort of like a a cautionary tale about uh how money corrupts yeah and how the system can totally screw you over yeah but um that sort of thing with player elimination is what what brought about the euro game um phenomenon okay where you know there's there's no player elimination less dice and it's all about a a lot more tactics a lot more strategy a bit like risk but without the dice so what what would you what would you say is 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 an example of one of those games uh i don't know if there's many you'd be familiar with no there's a a game called carcassonne okay have you heard of that no i've not heard of that no um so the thing about carcassonne is it's a tile based game yeah so you put down tiles you place workers and when you complete what you're making you know like a little city or a road or i don't know something else I think that's it. Cities, roads, and cloisters are the three things. You get points. Yeah. Um, once you run out of tiles, the game ends, and you the person with the most points wins. So you've got that opportunity to catch up at any point. Yeah. Uh, other examples will be Ticket to Ride. Nice name, by the way. It is. Good song. Um, very good song. Probably not my favourite Beatles song. Yeah. Um, Sam would hate it. No, oh, it's a Beatles song. Of course he hates it. Yeah, of course, yeah. I... I I won't go on that tangent just yet. Uh, <laughs> ticket to ride. Like I just think of the big, the, the big three: uh, Carcassonne, Ticket to Ride, and uh, Katam, The Settlers of Katam. Yeah. Which you've probably not heard of. I've heard of the last one, but not played it. Mm. Yeah. I've sort of played it. It's uh, and then there's there's a co-op game called Pandemic, which I've is actually American. Heard of that. Definitely heard of that. Definitely heard of that because previous uh guest of mine blaine desantis he actually mentions mm. but talks about that on one of his an episode of one of his shows yeah um it's a, a very interesting game very topical right now because we're in the middle of the yeah. pandemic yeah um yeah that's probably one of my favorites actually because because it's a co-op and you're rather than fighting to see who get who you get who go who wins you're working together to defeat a a, a single I say enemy, but it's it's not really an enemy, if you know what I mean. Yeah. Um, solve a problem. It's probably the best term to use. Which, which is really nice. It's nice to see things where you cooperate as, as well as battle to see who wins. So these shows that you listen to then or you watch, have they, are they, uh, do they all go into these 
board games that you're on about in detail? I haven't watched many of them. No. Um, they talk about like how they feel about it. Um, they go to a bit of detail. They they gloss over the rules a little bit. Um, and they, they just talk about how it feels like to play them. Uh, plus one forward, the role-playing game one, they have a very, I've noticed they have a very specific structure. And it's, it's very much like a talk show. Right. Unlike the other one I, I saw, which is just very much like a review show. Um, but again, I guess it's like you, you can get anything on on podcasts. You can. Reviews, talk shows. I mean, I've essentially just done the tip of the iceberg with with the what three three podcasts i'm familiar with yeah, yeah. which is you and those two other ones that's good. yep but you know i mean i've said on the other other ones of mine you know that there's there's something there for everybody so the idea is that people are providing content for you to be able to listen to that's you know mm. that you might you know, yeah yeah it's very much like radio it's easily accessible radio. Yeah. yeah. And unlike, I mean, I'm not familiar with podcasts by any, any ex- extent of the imagination. I imagine the biggest, biggest difference is you don't usually play music on podcasts. I don't know. Probably because of licensing issues. Yes. There are really bad licensing issues. It's very much like you, you not, not exactly like a, a verbal version of Oprah or whatever. Um, but it's a bit more like Jonathan Ross or yeah. Jimmy Kimmel or, you know, um, like the the one, Jeremy Vine, if you want to get political and and, yeah. and, and, and the like, it's, it's a lot like that. But you pick what you want to look into. Yeah. And yeah, there's definitely something there for everyone. If you think about like the obscure, obscure subjects like, tabletop games board games yeah. role-playing games yeah. um thank goodness knows if you look at i'm sure spotify will tell me all the wonderful things that i could be watching listening to i do i i spend a lot of my uh i, I do confess i most of my uh i forget what the word would be Ooh, the slang podcast that sounds cool mm. I hate talking about myself. Yeah, I certainly do. Radio falls on here. So yeah, there's there's so much stuff on here that like I'm sure you could find everything. There's a lot of BBC radio things on there. Hmm. G'day, g'day. This is Matty C from the Astros Fantasy Football Podcast, way down in Australia. And we love getting to listen to Marv meet new podcasters from all over the world here on the Pods Like Us podcast. I mean that that Bob Dylan one that I listened to. There is no way that you would find a show about Bob Dylan on normal radio nowadays that goes into that mm. much depth because because you know radio programmers, a bit like television stations, they wouldn't fork out that money because they'd be saying we're after a large audience. We're not going to make a program that's going to be you know going to be listened to by a few thousand people because we want a couple of million people li- listening to this show. Mm. So, so I, th- I think that's where podcast, uh, probably shine really. Yeah. Is with that sort of thing. It's like all these t- talk shows that you're on about, like out of the blank and, and that they're all, you know, they're all a specific way where I think if Robbie was on the radio, I think it wouldn't quite have the same feel to it. You'd get pushed to by by production to do things to suit a wider audience. Yeah, and I guess one of the great things about the internet in general and, and how we sort of digest our, I say, entertainment news, all that sort of thing is, and it's, it can be a bit of a double edged sword. That yeah. you've got that variety, you've got that niche interests that you probably wouldn't get anywhere else. You wouldn't get from normal mainstream media like television or, or even normal basic radio. Yeah. Um, 
I suppose with radio, you, with the radio, you are missing out on like listening to music with the DJs talking over it sometimes. So I think that's more when you have a like have a DJ at a party, they talk over the stuff. On another note, grinding my goat, that is something that definitely grinds my goat. Yeah. Or people talking goat over the music. Yeah. 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 They're called grumble but goat, those people I've grumble talked Grumble goats. To. Yeah. It grinds my gears is the better word for it me. It grinds my gears, yes. Um. Yeah. Thank you, Peter Griffin. I haven't seen that in ages. No. Um, it's on Disney Plus. Is it? See, yes. I've never really bothered with Disney Plus. No. But then no. I'm also someone who gets most of their entertainment from YouTube, as yeah. my as do my kids. Um, it would be perfect for the kids, actually, for, for Isaac and Emma. Be. Yeah, they'd love it, um, probably. Yeah. I get. I I do have the Amazon Prime video. Yeah. It gives me a fair bit of what I want, but not everything I want. Obviously, it gave me Star Trek Picard. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah which uh, I found that one interesting because, again, that's one where you, you get very polarised opinions of, don't you? You get people who are like, oh, this is really good. That's really amazing. And then you get the people who's like, oh, but you 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 killed off this character and you did it and it just seems so meaningless. Why did you bring him back or her back just to kill them off? Yeah, yeah. And I can see that. And again, it, it goes back to being respectful to. It's a weird one because, yeah, I liked Picard. It was fun. Yeah. It's not. It's but it's you know you you have to admit it's not Star Trek: The Next Generation. No. But then at the same time, it doesn't really pretend to be. No. It'd be nice if it was because, yeah. um, might cause a few arguments here. I think the story was stretched. Yeah, it would have been nice if it was a bit more episodic. I guess that's what people probably came into. Yeah. I think if they'd, if they'd have told the story with two less episodes and made it a bit tighter, that might have made it a bit mm. more palatable. Yeah. I, I, I got the feeling going into it that like the first few episodes would tell that sort of pilot story and then after that it'd be episodic. But I think going forward, you, you're going to get just a single story arc for the whole season yeah. with the odd side excursion here and there, but everything will still push that main story forward. And maybe that's the way that, that most entertainment is these days. You can't episodic content isn't as, as your know, standalone episodic content isn't just popular anymore. No, everything has to push this big story. Yeah, which is a bit why, a bit like why I've said to uh, that that show that I talked to, where they talk about Deep Space Nine, and I said that, or well, we're all saying that in, mm. a, in a way that that series was so before its time because a lot of that is arc based, very much so. And it was, it was, it was with Star Trek. It was very much. When you think about it, it I would say that DS Nine is not my favourite Star Trek. Yep. Obviously, that's the next generation, uh, which, you know, this next generation was episodic and I loved it for it. But DS9 did something and it, that was really good in some ways. Yeah. It did sort of stray a little bit from Gene Rodenbury's vision of a utopia, but it also then to- told a very good story, again, in, in these big arcs. I think Gene Roddenberry's um, idea behind Star Trek altered over the years because I, I don't think that the original vision of the first original series of Star Trek was the same as how he saw it when he was creating Next Generation because there was there was no, I thought yeah, go on sorry I'll let, I'll let you finish first actually I was going to say that there was there were occasions in the original series where there was debate between the characters in Starfleet and then when it came to Next Generation, you were saying there should be no conflict between the characters that are in Starfleet, only between Starfleet and aliens. Or And so I think there was a slight change there. It's an interesting one. I think, I don't know how much of that was Gene Roddenberry, but also you think about it as well. 
the original series took place in the 1960s, which in America was like a very different time. And he wanted to tell stories that uh, highlighted the sort of how things were back then. Yeah. With, I mean, you think about how like the you know the cold war was going on you had the whole you know the cold war and distrust uh, of your allies come the 80s with st- the next generation that was pretty much you know the, the the 80s was very much the fall of the soviet union and then the uh, iron curtain so times were a lot more hopeful then yeah. probably closer to what Gene Roddenberry hopes would be there for the future. Yeah. Um. But yeah, you could tell. You could tell like the stories in the original story se- series could be significantly more political yeah. if you think about it than some of the later ones. I mean, they did. They, even now, they still try to be that way, uh, and I think people attack discovery and whatnot for being too woke or whatever um star trek's always been woke absolutely yeah yeah it's always been this liberal i hate the word woke by the way um it's always been that sort of like liberal um forward-thinking way forward-thinking philosophy of what the future should be absolutely not probably the storytelling is is I mean, the idea of a spore drive just sounds ridiculous to me. Uh, but, um, you know, it's, it's that, yeah. that liberal thinking is what makes Star Trek Star Trek. And I think people forget that because the original show was in the 60s. And you look at the 60s and you look at now, people's attitudes are very different. Absolutely. Yep, definitely. Here's a few questions. Here's a question. I mean, you could probably spend hours or an an hour talking about this. What would you say are the best of the original series movies? What would be your top two and your bottom two and why? I wonder if you've answered that question yet, actually. Ooh, no, I haven't. My screen's going funny here. I don't know why. I know, mine too. Just gone black. (coughs) Oh, uh... And the reason I asked that is because uh, a friend of mine, um, I think it's a podcast. I saw it on YouTube, but I think it's also in podcast format. He's he's doing a, a show called, what they call, what's it called? I, I'm going to say Those Were the Days, or These Are the Days, uh, okay. where he talks to his friend about a lot of old school things from like the late 70s, early 80s, from his childhood. And, you know, 1978 or whatever, that was when the first Star Trek film came out. Along with the first Star Wars film. And one of the ones I saw of him was, uh, again, I I obviously listened to that one because the guy's my friend from Japan. He's an American, but he he lives in Japan. And he spoke about all the different Star Trek films. Spent an hour talking about it, I think. Yeah. Didn't watch it all the way through. A bit rubbish for that, me. Right. So I'm wondering, just for the sake of, conversation what would you say are your top two and your bottom two of the original star trek films which actually covers two-thirds of the films does it i don't, I don't know whether to include generations in that because that was a crossover wasn't it sort of okay well class had generations as well oh god generations was actually quite weak yes i think so as well Cause t- Cause it's top two. Yeah. yeah, I mean, generations at the end. It's basically you got th- you got three old guys fighting each other. Yeah, I was really. I if we do class that one in, I would actually probably put that at my bottom. I don't yeah. know where it, if Star Trek Five is actually worse than that. Um, I think Star Trek Five could have been a lot better. Those are my bottom two. Yeah. It could have been. Yeah. Um it felt weak and not very very well thought out. My favourite two would probably be Wrath of Khan and yeah. Undiscovered Country. I think 
I would agree with you there. And oh, bottom two. And I think I would also agree with your order. Wrath of Calm first, and then the Undiscovered Country. Yeah, that, that's the order I would go. I would say my least favourite possibly would be... I can't decide. The bottom two would definitely be Generations and Star Trek V. But I'm not sure what order they would be in. This is Dave of Live Life Loud, the Decibolic Podcast, and you're listening to Pods Like Us with Marv. 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 Um, what are your thoughts on Star Trek the motion picture how high or how low would that be I like Star Trek the motion picture so do I I didn't like it the first time around I, I just think that if, if it was made a bit like like I said with Picard if they made that a bit tighter then it might be a lot better of a film if the because there's a lot of bits that just carry on and on and on like like when they're flying towards they're on the, like the shuttle and going towards the new refit of the, the enterprise or whatever it is. And mm. you just think they're spending five, six minutes in that shuttle going across and then it goes round and it shows that you're from all angles. And it, it, I think it, yeah, there's certain bits where it could actually, yeah, if it was, yeah, if it was speeded up a bit and you didn't have so many, bits like that i think it might be more of an interesting film for people mm. story-wise that that took away from it but i do wonder i think one of the things uh one of the two guys was saying was like it was a bit of a big deal like showing that new enterprise because star trek throughout the 70s there was no star the very little star trek at the very least you had like what the animated series yeah and that was it yeah so, you know, there was no new star, very little new Star Trek in the 70s. And then you get that glorious look of the new Enterprise, the Enterprise that familiar yet different. Yeah. Um, and I think they handled the movies were mostly handled quite well. Yeah. Yeah. Again, I, I think the motion picture was very good. Um, yeah. From a story perspective, uh, the pacing was not quite there. Yeah. It, uh, like, it felt like more like something for TV. Yeah. It, it reminds me of, uh, Ooh, yeah. Like they were pushing for uh, phase two really, really hard. Here's what we, you could have had. It was based on a phase two episode that they were going yeah. to do. Yeah. And just expanded on that. That's what that was. Um, the next generation films, I thought Insurrection was better than people think than it's made out to be. Yeah, Insurrection was not that bad. I like that film. And um, the last one, what was it called again? The last in- Nemesis. Last- Nemesis. That could have been better, but I don't think that was awful all the way through. Mm. But then again, saying that, I've only watched it once, twice, maybe. It was probably the weakest of the next generation films. Yeah. But although actually the weakest would be generations. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And then when you've only got like what, four films? Five if you is it four? Five? Yeah, four or five films. You don't have a lot to go with. No. So you've got what is it? Uh, generations, generations, first contact. Yeah. Insurrection. Insurrection. Nemesis. Nemesis. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that one's easy. You, the best one is First Contact, then Insurrection, then Nemesis, then Generations. Easy peasy. Yeah. So that's why probably Insurrection looks so good. I don't... Yeah, it's been a long time since I've seen Insurrection. I, I enjoyed it. I did. And I think, yeah. I think that's yeah. one thing. People forget, like, even with... I, I, I'm going to probably get flack from you for this. But I actually enjoyed Avatar. Okay. You're not going to get flat because, you know, I know a lot of people that like it. And I could get even more flack by saying The Last Airbender, speaking of Avatar, The Last Airbender film was actually enjoyable. But, you know, for me, I was watching it. Yeah, I've heard people who watch the cartoons think it's an atrocity. And I think it goes back to 
how respectful you are to the original, the source material. And I have no, I have no like link or I don't care about the source material because I've never seen it. I imagine if I did and I saw that film, I'd hate it. Uh, But in a, in a capsule, in in a bubble, just like the Avatar film, it's relatively enjoyable. If you don't think too hard, it's nice CGI stories. Okay. But then if you look at that in that, in in that perspective, you probably say the same about Batman versus Superman. I enjoyed it. I don't think it was a very good, um, the best take that they could have done on, on the, uh, death of Superman story. What was the name of that bad guy? Is it dark seed? Dark, dark side. Is he called? Or is it, I think is it's pronounced. The guy, I think it's, the guy, the I, think guy who... I think it's pronounced dark side, but it's spelled dark seed or D A R K S E I D. Yeah. And he's a dude who's like a guy who, who in the comics kills off Superman for like that, that year or whatever, however long it is. Yeah. Back when, uh, you know, DC comics probably were a lot better than they are, uh, than they are now. Like, but then I'm not the biggest like DC fanboy. Oh, you're in a nice place. Yeah, I've changed my back- background now. It's a lot nicer than mine. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't know you could do videos. Stop doing that. Oh, yeah, I do. I did actually. I did. Yeah. I just effort. Let me see what I can do. I I'll will, probably better show I will never make a video podcast. <laughs> really? No too much hassle trying to edit okay. it and then you'd have to edit the video and the sound and i don't know what that would be how easy that would be to do i presume not very probably okay I, just, I think i think i don't have any videos here i am going to change my thing though do i have any other interesting pictures i can have as my background i don't know i'm gonna have to bring this to an end soon so that we can watch the telly yeah so i can i can get some sleep Yes. Yeah, because you've got work in the morning. I do, unfortunately. No, I could have spoken a bit about this sort of thing. We could. We could have spoken about, you know, going to Alton Towers all those times that we've been and whatever. Yeah. Mm, I took Mamiko, actually, um, a little while back. Yep. Actually, was it last year or the year? No, it wouldn't have been last year because that was COVID. The year before. Yep. Uh, of, of course, I I um, don't like having my thing up there. I, I I want mine to be. I don't want mine to be the big one. Come on, there you go. That's a bit better. So I I, I as as in the past, I I pooed my pants uh, on oblivion. Not a li- not literally. No, not literally, but like figuratively. Yeah. Um that's a uh what's it called that's a dive coaster the first ever dive coaster yeah did you know that well you you would learn it as the first vertical drop but it was like, like 87 degrees actually but no one's ever gonna really care about that but it's the first uh dive coaster yep. where it just holds you there and then slams you down um mamiko loved it I didn't. Yeah. Mark, oh, Mark loves it. Uh, Our brother Mark loves it, doesn't he? I he, bet he, he does. He really likes it, yeah. I bet he does. And he always knows where the camera is for the cameras. He's a cheeky booker for that. Yeah. I went on Nemesis as well, which is, you ask most people who are a, a British and a roller coaster buffs, fanatics, and they will say that the Nemesis is the best coaster of all time. And it's really good, especially if you're at the front. If you're not, and you have to take your glasses off, it's like you just get thrown around all over the place. Yeah. And it just didn't feel like as amazing as it did when I was a uh, you know fourteen, fifteen. Did they get rid of the Thunder Looper then? Yes. Yeah. Uh, was, so was the reason the, they, uh, the reason with? they got rid of they have a problem with quite a few of them. The right. problem with the Thunder Looper was because it, it was over tree height. And yep. because it's on a conservation site, they're not allowed anything over tree height. Right. 
so they had to you know say no that's not allowed and they were getting complaints from the neighbors in the neighboring village uh, as as they did with uh, oblivion as well because people screamed yeah well, of course they do so much that like there were there were complaints from neighbors in the neighboring town so what did they do then? Did they uh, move the, the Oblivion to somewhere else on the land that's further away no, from the it's, village? It's, so it's, it's in the same place. So what they've done is they've got rid of the soundtrack that says don't look down. Yeah, it's building them up, isn't it, to something? Yeah. So so that way it won't be quite the same. Yeah. But it's not as busy. It didn't feel as busy when I went down there like when I was a kid, but then... I think how you look at things as a child and how, as, or even as a teenager and how you are as an adult, totally different things. I think the, after they had the incident, the big incident that they had, they were really close for a while. I don't think they've had quite as much uh, footfall as they did back in the day. Do you mean with the Smiler? I think, was it the Smiler or something where they had an, an, an accident there or something? Yeah, I can't remember what happened. Yeah, that's there. one where a couple of people lost legs yeah and again that's that's what happens when you ignore safety that was a completely avoidable accident it it should never like make you feel like roller coasters are dangerous they are if you ignore if if the people who are pressing the buttons press the ignore the seat override the safety mechanism and the safety mechanism said there's something there don't throw another coat. Don't throw another car out. And you're like, well, I don't see a car. Let's rather than go and investigate, they just threw another car out. Yeah. Two people lost their legs. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. Um, now the newest roller coaster they put down there is the Wicker Man. Yes, and I've heard of that. That is yeah. really amazing. Right. It's not the most thrilling ride. It doesn't have any loops or any big drops or any any super thrill elements but the theming around it is fantastic yeah also it's like a fun ride in general it's like it's like big thunder mountain but with a fire and woody theme i think somebody needs to do a podcast Disney. about these places yeah, there probably are some there's a lot of uh, people on youtube they they mostly do talking with you know videos of of people riding the the, the roller coaster in the background talking about all these different roller coasters. Cool. Again, unfortunately, you're going to hear me make uh, whatever it is regarding YouTube because that's what I how how I digest my entertainment. Well, there are a lot of podcasts who who have their shows on YouTube, so yeah, yeah for sure, yeah. for sure, and they do well. But uh, it is it is probably time for me to to go to bed, boys. I'm going to do an official ending now, and then we're going to carry on and just have a very quick chat, dude. Okay. Okay. Yep. yep. Anyway, th- thanks for chatting with me, dude. I'll catch you soon. Yeah. Cheers. Yeah, you too. <laughs>